I'm Alexis Van Herkman, and welcome to Resolve in a Rush, where you'll learn DaVinci Resolve grading and finishing techniques in under five minutes. So it wouldn't be a new version of DaVinci Resolve if there weren't some additional toys for colorists and motion graphics oriented editors to be able to play with. If I turn on the Open Effects browser, I'm going to walk you through the new Aperture Diffraction plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that onto this node so that you can see immediately we've taken this nice restaurant shot with Steve in it and added a ton of sparkle. So this is what's going to happen if you apply aperture diffraction to a clip that has pinpoint light sources. So if we look at the controls over here, first off, like many of the lighting controls, there are a set of isolation controls and I can select my output. So if I want to see the isolated source to see what I'm isolating, I can go ahead and tune that up to make sure that I'm only including things that I want to include to kick off this glow effect. So I'm going to close that down and go back to looking at the final composite. There are some nice global controls that allow me to choose how textured that glow effect is going to be. And as I adjust this, you can see that diffraction pattern starting to emerge. I can actually preview that and you can see some of what this filter is simulating. I can preview the aperture. I can preview the diffraction pattern and I can play around with how that pattern appears based on these controls before I even apply it to anything. If I want to scale it back, if I want to get the kind of double blade frizz, rotate it, do a little bit of chroma shifting. I can take a look at the diffraction patterns alone and then of course look at the final composite. So there are a lot of ways I can customize this and I haven't even gotten down to the compositing controls down below where I have the option to normalize the brightness relative to the scene and actually tune up the specific brightness. This is the control that's going to give you probably the most value with this plugin. If you just want to give a hint of that glow without blasting it out, this is the way you dial it down to a realistic value. Now of course because we're scraping the actual brightness from the image to trigger this effect, you'll notice that, and I'll turn this up a little bit so it's easier to see. You'll notice that anything that flickers, any levels that change, are going to animate this glow, which gives you a really live effect. Another reason why you probably don't want to blast it. It looks more natural turned down to a lower level. And of course, I also have the option of colorizing. So if I don't want it to be pulling color, from the source. If I just want to impose a uniform color, say I want all of these to be green for some reason, I can do that. And now Steve finds himself inside of the Emerald City. Let's pop over to another image. Not that I'm trying to sell this filter to you or anything, but for instance, you can start to see, even with a more conventional image, how you can start getting some Maxfield Parish out of these clouds. Play around with the aperture size. Play around with the scale to see how much blur you want on the outside of this. This isn't just for creating starbursts. This is also for creating textured volumetric glow, for lack of a better term. So it's a really cool filter. You should give it a chance, get used to what it can do. I think you'll find yourself using it more than you think you might.